Good afternoon, everybody. I thought today I would take you guys on a journey to see uh, how I got started in junk journaling, how I figured out what it was, and realized that it was the perfect hobby for me. It all started probably a year and a couple months ago. I think it was January of last year. Um, I'd already always been a crafter, but was looking for something new. Um, because I had really gotten into thrifting and antiquing in the past four or five years. And so obviously when you do that kind of hobby, unless you resell, you end up running out of space to put everything that you love that you buy. So I knew I needed to figure out a different hobby that included being able to go look for treasures without buying large ish items that would take over my house. So, enter junk journaling. I wish I could tell you the very first junk journaling video that I ever saw on YouTube. I don't remember. I do have a list of, I guess, junk journalers that I watched to get me started. And when I started watching them, I binge watched them in like a week and realized very fast that this is what I was meant to do. So, uh, I do have a background in scrapbooking. I scrapbooked both of my children's growing up years from birth until probably nine or ten and then just kind of got too busy and put it aside. But I did have a lot of the scrapbooking tools still here in the house available to me so it was pretty easy to just add a few things to get started. But I wanted to show you today um, and I don't even know if this is something that would interest you or not. If not, you don't have to watch this, but I wanted to show you my first few junk journals that I made um, as like learning to, to tr try to figure out how to even make one and sort of stretching my wings to see whether or not I was any good at it or whether or not I even enjoyed doing it. So uh, I think the first uh, person I tried to copy her style was Kitty Witty Papercraft. She is on YouTube and Etsy and Instagram. Uh, and so she did the, the ring journals. Uh, when I first started watching them, I was like, oh my goodness, there's no way in the world I would be able to ever learn how to sew signatures in. So <laughs> this was obviously a very, um, to me, this seemed very doable and it was. I should, probably shouldn't have bought a pack of 250 rings because they're still sitting in my craft cart, but I, I'm finding ways to use them. But yes, this was the very first one that I ever made. Again, none of these are ever going to be sold because they're full of copyright infringements left and right. This, these are just learning for me. Um, and I'd also just gotten a color printer. I got the Eco, Eco Tank by Epson. So I was trying to figure out what it was capable of as well. So the first thing I did was I scanned and printed a reprint of this little golden book that I had already on my shelf. I do collect little golden books, so I didn't have to go out and buy one for this. <clears throat> and then I ended up just gluing it down to chipboard and then um, putting some washi tape on the edge. And again, on the back, lining it with more chipboard. Now, the very first kit I ever bought, and I only allowed myself to buy one kit at first to see if I liked it. I bought the digital kit by KB and Friends. I think it was called Spring or Easter, um, but so, a lot of the things in this book are from this kit. And this is also before I had purchased cardstock, so a lot of these are just on copy paper. But other things like this came from Pinterest. It was a vintage Pyrex ad that I just um, downloaded and then printed again not copyright free, but this was my personal journal. So just started adding things in here. It was fun. I, I do say that I like the flexibility of a uh, ring binder. I like that you can take stuff in and take stuff out and put stuff in. That's, that's super neat. Um, I might try to make some more like this in the future. I know there are people out there that love them. I prefer the look of a finished one, but Again, this was so easy to do and easy to customize. And if you sell it, the person can take out what they don't like and add more. 
So I just started grabbing things, <laughs> looking at lists of things to include in, and scouring my house for things. So this is a paint, uh, paint chip brochure that I had requested several years back when we were painting my daughter's room. This is a postcard that I got at an antique shop. These are scans of paper dolls. These are just um, free, free scrapbook digital papers that I downloaded. I turned this, some of this is coming in glued, uh, turned a page from a cookbook into a pocket. I guess this is my very first pocket. And then this is from, you might recognize this, this is from um, Not Graphics Fairy. FreePrettyThingsForYou.com Yep. So yes, this is um, my very early attempts at this. Here's one of those binder dividers that I scanned. I loved it. Um, I still was feeling unsure about it after this, trying to figure out, did I even do this right? Um, is it, would anyone ever even want this? Um, of course, obviously I couldn't sell it because of copyrights. I spent about three months before I got serious about it, researching um, copyright law and learned a ton. This is from a Shelvador refrigerator user's manual. Some of this washi tape is coming off. I know um, a lot of you probably know that you have to reinforce that with glue. A lot of the brands just aren't very tacky. This is a vintage jello ad and a little ticket stapled on. Some of these are left over from my homeschool printables when the kids were little. This is from a catalog. I made copies of everything too because I was thinking, this is great. I, I can use the books I have and I don't even have to rip them up. I can just make copies and use them over and over. Again, not realizing, no, you can't until unless it's not before 1932, I think it is. So this is another KB and Friends. So like I said, this is a learning curve for me. This is, um, this was my prototype, so to speak, to see if I even liked it. I did, and the rest is history. There's so many cute printables on Pinterest, um, as you probably know. It's just super hard to find out which ones are legitimate or commercial use or not. If you guys have any tips on how you navigate this tricky field, please comment below because we can learn from each other. We can learn from our research and we can learn from our mistakes. This was actually some Sanrio stationery that I had. And this is parchment cardstock from when I did scrapbooking. This paper is probably over 15 years old. I tell you guys, I kept everything. I'm glad I did. I used um, Kitty Witty Paper Crafts method or you know, how I have a scrapbook page and then I'll have several small items and then another scrapbook page. So yes, that was my very first junk journal, personal use. And I will show you a couple more that I did after this. After doing that ring journal, I decided, you know what? I love the way these three ring binders, or is it five ring? Five ring binders look from the 60s and 70s that were, there's a cookbook and there's a garden book and I think there's a home decorating book. So I went onto Facebook Marketplace and um, let me get some coffee. I purchased a new garden book. I think this is 1971. Could be wrong. It's late 60s if it's not 71. And I turned this into another personal book for me. The most beautiful or my favorite words ever. <laughs> So anyone that knows me knows that I love words. I have always loved words. I love the way they sound. Um, 
I do have favorite words. We joke that I'm an Enneagram four, and so, and I, with a wing of five, and so we always joke, my husband and I, that, you know, only Enneagram fours have favorite words. <laughs> that, I don't know if that's true, but um, I do. I, I really do love words, um, and I credit some of my English teachers in middle school for that who sharpened or awakened the love of words in us in class helping us write with more flowery words. But yes, I just took this book apart and took out a lot of the main bulk of pages and left in probably 50% of these dividers and then started adding other things in here. This is a Kmart ad from a newspaper, again, photocopied, because <clears throat> I didn't want to use the original. Um, but yes, so every, Every section I left one or two pages that I thought were the most colorful and then took out the rest of them to use to make ephemera with. I learned how, started learning how to use my sewing machine in this journal. Um, I hope it's not going off the edge. Um, so yes, I learned how to use the zigzag stitch and attach things to the edges so that you can use them as a tuck spot. This is Dick and Jane page. This was a super fun book to make. This one flips out. You know, I always forget about flip out pages now that I've been making them a while. This is a vintage sheet, and this is just from my stash of fabric from a long time ago. It's a page of stitches. I did get pretty on Early on, I got a We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board, and this has been one of my favorite tools. This is a paint chip tuck spot with a collage, and this is some discontinued wallpaper. Book page pocket. This is when I was learning that there are bad book pages for these, such as these that are very crumbly, and very, very brittle. So, learned my lesson there. This is a doily pocket. And this is an ad from a magazine. So this one kind of has a garden theme too, but... Okay, so here is a decorative stitch that my sewing machine does. And I quickly learned that a lot of the decorative stitches, can you see where it... It literally punched the paper out. <laughs> because there were so many stitches close together. Um, so that is a drawback to sewing on paper for sure. This is pretty. I've forgotten a lot of this stuff in here. This is actually a ledger page that my husband found in a book that belonged to his great uncle. It was already torn and just beautifully distressed. So I just glued it in here. This is cool. I'll have to remember this idea. One of my bullet list things to do is to make an idea junk journal. Because I forget. You forget after a while. You forget what you've done. This is a um, fabric tab. A little sack made with paper, printed paper. A seed packet pocket. Oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite digital kits ever. This is made by Little Bendy. I don't remember the name of the kit. Something about swimming pools or summer something, but I love it. It looks like 70s lawn furniture. That's why I chose this. And then this is some really cool vintage upholstery trim that I found at an antique shop. I didn't have much of it, so I knew I needed to put it in this 70s binder. I won't go through this entire thing. Just wanted to show you, here's here's me playing with some more decorative st stitches. Just wanted to show uh, my early walk into what junk journaling is and whether or not I would enjoy it. Tuck spot. Another flip out. Okay, yes, I still make these folders. I put them in the center of my sewing journals. The pocket folders in the center. I love these. 
And this is, this is cute. Isn't it funny how you forget what you've done? <clears throat> I have not written much in here. Very little. I need to get on that. Okay, my very first shaker card. I'm going to do a tutorial for these really soon. Maybe even this week. Um, I started off making them with double-sided tape and quickly realized I did not like that method. I kept sticking things before I was ready to put them down and also the glitter kept getting in the tape. So I have switched to an all sewing method and I will show you guys how I do that because that's one of my favorite ephemeris to make. Another sheet pocket. <clears throat> side pocket. Wallpaper again. This is another little bendy. Um, it comes in that kit, that summer kit, and this is a fold out. And this little notepad. That's cute. Paint chip pockets. My Lowe's near me has stopped selling this style, and I'm so sad because I love the little see-throughs. I think it was brilliant, but they've switched to no cutout paint chips. This is a house design book. Here's another little bendy fold out. I put a little piece of tape. This is so fun. It folds, it's like a swimming pool, but it folds out. <clears throat> Lots of fold outs. <laughs> and look, it's my my logo on my YouTube and my Etsy shop. So here's some words that I like. I've already put them in here, but I haven't added them. These are some of my favorite words. And whenever I would think of a new one, I would just drop it in this list. If you have a favorite word, please tell me in the comments below. And you can have more than one. <laughs> this looks like... I don't know if this was supposed to wrap around all of these. I think these were just extra pages I put in and then that was unattended, but it looks like she's dangling from a string. That's fun. And sewed this one on completely crooked, but that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, that was number two. And then the last one I'm gonna show you is the, I don't believe this is the first, but I think this is the second little golden book that I ever made. The first is actually a flip through on this channel. It might be the first or second video I ever posted. It was called The Shy Little Kitten. But this was um, this was a personal journal that I made for personal Bible reading for myself. And I pulled out all the stops with this one. I um, Again, there are copywritten things in here, but this is one of the most embellished journals I've ever made. If I were to sell this, I would have to charge a pretty good amount for it because it's so, so full of everything. <laughs> but, um, but yes, these are copies of Ideals Magazine pages. Um, pulled out the rubber stamps for this one. Flashcards. Lots of ink edges, postcards. Hymn book pages. Little poems. Okay, here's a sewn paper um, shaker card, which I will show you how to make. This is from a 1960s children's health textbook. The colors in this one are so fun. Lots of cottagey colors, I call them. Bright and cheerful. I still love making these little folded page pockets that go all the way through the book. Some more biblical maps. This is an embellished dictionary definition. I need to make more of those. I have used them all up. A little fabric flip with chenille.
Here's another envelope and an altered paper clip. I learned how to make these from Lace Cover Skies. She is on YouTube, please look her up. A lot of these early, um, I will try to link below the seven or eight YouTubers that really got me started in junk journaling. Um, Diane at um, I think it's my old barn door so she's on YouTube as well she's about to reach 10,000 subscribers so please subscribe to her so she can meet her goal <clears throat> but yes I'll try to remember to link all the ones that I give credit for inspiring me at the beginning and getting me over my fear of the unknown <laughs> and confidence that I needed and of course, a very supportive husband who cheers on anything that I set out to do. And very patient children who literally step over stuff in the floor every day because <laughs> mom is creating. Thank goodness my husband also enjoys going to yard sales and thrift stores, so that's one of the things we love to do together. He finds treasures too. Uh, I love sewing in entire pages. That's one of my favorite ways to showcase a book page without having to cut it or fold it. I think this is when I first started coffee dyeing lace too, and paper. Little bag. Some of this ephemera I, I got in some ephemera kits when I first started out and didn't know where to buy all these little things. Stencil with a doily. So this is just an envelope, the um, triangle from an envelope that my best friend sent me, and I turned it into a um, pocket, side pocket, and here's a paint chip. So this, I guess this is what truly makes it a junk journal, because normally I would have taken a picture of this envelope and the sticker she put on it and then thrown it away, but this way I can keep this part forever. Board, wallpaper borders are perfect for pockets, by the way. Oh, I love old postcards. Oh, uh, here's a specimen card. I'm trying to remember who taught me how to make these. Oh, I don't remember. I know that Lace Cover Skies does make these. That might be. She uses dried flowers in hers. This is just a little Victorian cutout. I have started drying flowers too. My son built me a flower press out of wood, so I didn't have to buy one. And I have some in there right now that I will check on next week. Here's a little mini book with a sewn, sewn center signature and then lots of fun pages. Oh, uh, pick and pay. Do you remember pick and pay shoes? And this is just a tag from Target. <laughs> there we go. This was finished last October. So maybe it wasn't as early as I thought, but I opened my Etsy shop, I think in January of this year, maybe February. Oh, the months run together. But yes, this is um, this has been such a fun journey and I'm learning every day. I'm still watching tutorials and learning from all of you 
So if you are one of the ones who um, inspire others and have tutorials and flip throughs of your creations, thank you because you inspire all of us to keep going and branch out and be more creative. Uh, so thank you for watching today and I would love to hear how you got started junk journaling. Leave me a comment below and we'll see you soon.